Sorry this one took so long to get out, there was a decent amount of research I had to do before I could release it, and I just started a new job, so I've been a little bit busy. In 2017, at the beginning of the format, we were introduced to many big changes to the game in the form of Terrain Wars, Prankster not affecting Dark types, a ban on Mega Pokemon, and of course a brand new regional decks. With such a different format compared to the past 3 in Gen 6, early tournaments would prove to be important to the development of the metagame, but little did anyone know that an unofficial Geico sponsored tournament would prove to be so important influential. On the weekend of February 25th and 26th of 2017, One Nation of Gamers in partnership with Geico sponsored an Invitational VGC tournament. I actually got a chance to speak to the person responsible for the event when making this video as he just happened to be subscribed to the channel and DM me about it. So everyone, meet the man, the myth, the Kevin. My name is Kevin Dong, I, aka uh, the Idea Monk. I am currently most known for working on a uh, RTS, Frost Giant Games, um, and it's basically the spiritual successor to the Warcraft and Starcraft franchise. Before that, I was working for um, both the esports organization Team Liquid and also um, I was helping out with another organization uh, called One Nation of Gamers, which is uh, relevant to uh, the, the tournament series that we're talking about right now. When I asked Kevin how the event came to be, he had this to say tournament getting organized uh was it on the side of one nation of gamers or was it one of the participants within the tournament that uh got the ball rolling on that end yeah so uh i guess i was coming from two perspectives uh the first was um this is not too well known but when i was at team liquid i was um uh, in the process of researching into potentially picking up bgc players so um even though um i was not a member of the VGC scene. I, I'd always been into Pokemon. Um, I've always been into like competitive battling uh, within Pokemon. So I think I was like a natural fit to um, kind of look into the VGC scene. Um, and second of all, from the One Nation of Gamers side, um, One Nation of Gamers had the Geico sponsorship and um, they were looking, um, th their whole thing is about like kind of propping up small communities. Um, so from that perspective, uh, One Nation of Gamers is also looking to sponsor kind of more more niche communities that um, did not have as much support as we thought they deserved. So um, those kind of like two things kind of meld together and I, um, I proposed, hey, why don't we like, as, uh, as One Nation of Gamers, why don't we run a VGC tournament? Um, I think the community would really like that. Um, it would really love bo both the monetary and the, the kind of more professional support that they um, have not seen as much from the, the uh, traditional grassroots tournament set. Yeah, so the Geico relationship was one that I had not worked on, but it was, um, uh, it was a relationship between Geico and One Nation of Gamers. Um, so. Um, basically, the uh, the owners of One Nation of Gamers formed that relationship, which is kind of like a multi-year relationship in which Geico would sponsor the activities of One Nation of Gamers. Uh, so um, anything that One Nation of Gamers produced um, would have that Geico sponsorship. This event included a wide variety of known VGC competitors and content creators. The tournament was split into two groups with A Drive, Aaron Zhang, Seijin Park, Wolf Glick in Group A, and Ina Shikar, Shoma Honami, Marcus Statter, and Alex Ogloza in Group B. With such a wide variety of big names in the community, I asked how they went about deciding who they would invite to participate. Yeah, so I think one of the coolest things about this tournament is um, I, I was the one primarily or, or organizing it, but as uh, someone who was not really in depth into the VGC scene, um, what uh, what we did was we actually reached out to a lot of VGC players to ask them, like, hey, what would be best for the scene? So specifically, uh, we worked very closely with um, with Aaron Cybertron Zhang, we worked with Wolf, and we worked with uh, Marcus Statter, and we worked with a lot of members of uh, Trainer Tower in order to put this together. Um, and that was how we came up with the eventual invite list. Um, the criteria for invited players were, um, uh, number one, you, you recognize, oh, they have to have a capture card because we have to do all of this online. And number two, um, they had to have like the notoriety to um, be able to, um, to, to, to attract viewers and also um, another one of our goals was to um, was to spread um, the popularity of VGC. Shoma ended up taking home the gold with an at the time new combination of Tapu Lele and Driftblim. While it was known that Driftblim could activate a seed and support its team with Tailwind and Will-O-Wisp, the only notable placement of Driftblim in tournament at the time was Vergab Malavia's Driftblim-Tapu Fini combo that he brought to Anaheim Regionals to get top 4. 
Lele Bloom was actually a fairly recent development that would go on to be a staple of the metagame throughout the rest of the season. Uh, Lele Drift Bloom was kind of like the standout from that tournament, um, and I believe it won the um, Australian uh, National Tournament um, direct like about less than a month after um, uh, the Onog tournament ran. Um, and it maintained some, somewhat of a bit of popularity throughout the entire uh, season, even into Worlds. Um, but yeah, so that that was like really cool to see like, oh, this tournament affected the meta of, um, of, uh, of, of the rest of the season. Um, and I think one of the coolest parts about that was um, the per player who won, I really wish I could remember his name, but he was a Japanese player. And from what I can tell, like there's not too much Japanese participation. There's not too much like overlap between the communities in the VGC scene um, in terms of Japanese players playing with um, Western players um, or even Korean players. And I think that um, that's partly why we we got this like kind of shake up in the meta um, in that there was able to be some overlap and you got to see, oh, maybe like the Japanese players with this one strategy are a bit ahead of the meta and um, there's more like intermingling going on there. This is an event that at the time was pretty huge for the community as it felt like VGC's first steps into esports territory. This might be uh, fun for your fans, but um, what actually happened was after we had this um, the event, we actually deemed the event fairly successful, and we wanted to start. Um, we wanted to run a league uh, for VGC um, uh, in order to kind of get something more sustainable to get more sustainable comment t content that was um that had that had relatively high production values and i i think that could have been really cool for uh, the scene overall um but what eventually happened and i want to be careful about like exactly how i say this but it was exactly yeah. like um onog eventually closed down um and i can't say too much about it but it was not because of like vgc at all and it was not be it was not for like a financial reason overall but you know just like things happening behind the scenes um, um, closed down the organization. So unfortunately, we never uh, got we never got that. Um, as for me, I eventually transitioned from um, like Team Liquid and the esports side to becoming a game designer. Um, so um, even though tournament organization is not something I do on a daily basis these days, um, I'd be interested, honestly, in helping the VGC scene if, like, they wanna they want any advice or um, they wanna run some kind of event similar to this. I want to thank Kevin for reaching out to help me out with this video. His insight was actually really great to hear, and I had no idea he was still active within the community. Links to his socials are gonna be down below. But if you guys enjoyed this video at any point in time, do me a favor and please leave a like on it and subscribe for more VGC content, and be sure to check out the rest of the lore series. Thank you.